All right, again, today it is November 4th, 2017. My lesson today is Hamito-Semitic. All right, so from ethiogrio.com, I'm going to read just a small part of this article titled Afro-Asiatic Languages, and I just want to share about this term Hamito-Semitic and uh, probably read a little from another website or two as well. At first, when I started learning this Hebrew stuff from the Torah, it was just Shem you're hearing about and Shemites and Hebrew and Hebrew Israelite. After I got reading some more, then I started coming across the term Afro-Asiatic. And then in time, I heard this strange term, Hamito Semitic, and I'm like, wait, that don't sound too good. So what I'm saying is that the more I search and read, I find this term, Hamito Semitic, is kind of strange. It's not much mentioned unless you're studying, you're going to come across it more. But people don't generally, you know... And when you get with now Hebrew Israelites, we're so caught up with the Torah talking about Israelites, 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 Israelites. And this whole cursing Africa and Africans and Egyptians and so on, it just, you know, it just seems a little bit odd. But look at what this site is saying. Afro-Asiatic alternatively Afro-Asiatic I guess I'm making a compound, compound word out of it so, to let you focus more on each part of the word also known as Hamito-Semitic or Shemitic is a large language family including about 375 living languages so that's just the languages that are still around now we know more dropped off Afro-Asiatic languages or Hamito-Semitic languages are spoken predominantly in the Middle East, North Africa, the Horn of Africa, and parts of the Sahel. More than 300 million people speak an Afro-Asiatic language. So now, when you look at this word, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny the way information gets tucked away and, and just misses the masses of people. <laughs> I give the term sub-Saharan and so on that, you know. Uh, it says, these Afro-Asiatic languages are spoken also in parts of the Sahel. Now, when you look up Sahel, it says here from Wikipedia, the Sahel is the eco-climatic and biogeographic zone of transition in Africa between the Sahara to the north and the Sudanian savanna to the south. And it goes on saying more stuff, click on more at Wikipedia. So basically, this is just more parts of Africa that it's talking about. And certainly you'll be dealing also with more of the wetter parts that they said dried up a few thousand years ago. So, if I go back and I reread from this website, that last part would sound a little bit like this. Afro-Asiatic languages, or Hamito-Semitic languages, are spoken predominantly in the Middle East, which you're telling you is pretty much, you know, Africa, when you're talking about the Levant and so on, because um, they say Israel is in Africa. So, uh, that part and other part of Africa called North Africa, the Horn of Africa and parts of the Sahel, in other words, and parts of Africa and other parts of Africa. So they're basically telling you Afro-Asiatic languages are African type languages or Hamito-Semitic languages are African languages of Africans who moved around in these different parts or who were found in these different parts. You see how it starts to sound different the more you read? Sahel! 
Like, I mean, is there any reason to make up that word? <laughs> so now, what do you deal with Shemitic people? You're dealing with African people. So then, when you talk about Israelites and Abraham turning to Abraham, they're not really shifting nations or people groups really. It's just the same people who were living, coming rather out of the same family with Noah out of the boat and they're living in their own little people groups that we might call tribes or in larger ways we'd call them nations and they just found their own spot of land and living but they're from the same family, Noah. So when you deal with Hamito and Shemitic people, you're talking about a large family of people who went on to live with varying degrees of culture, but still enough culture to show that they are one kind of people, African people, who went into parts of Asia as well. So Hamito Shemitic, Abraham Abraham, should it have been Abra Shem or Abraham? Because, see, I'm not trying to be religious. I'm trying to find the most high. Whoever he or it is, pardon me for putting it like that, I created us. Whoever this God of the Israelites are, who found it necessary to make a covenant with all the members of the family of all the sons of Noah in the boat before they come off the boat, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah himself. So, somehow Japheth seems to be treated a little bit differently, so I don't know what to think about that yet. But Hamito Shemedic are grouped together as, they, as if they are one larger group of people, like two sons clicking together, and they often work together. The Israelites were working with the Hamites a lot. They're, well, okay, they had their grievances and their fights and wars at certain times and so on. But they were, they did a lot of things together. After all, they're brothers, aren't they? So, Hamito Shemitic, that term seems to tie these two people together in a way where sometimes when we read the Bible, we are cultured in our minds by other people who taught us the Bible because you didn't teach it yourself to yourself. You didn't come out of the womb knowing all this stuff. But you're cultured in your minds to put Ham and Shem at odds with each other as much as is possible. You're going to hate Hamites because they are heathens. You're going to hate Hamites because they are Africans. You're going to hate Hamites because... But Abram became Abra heathen. Abraham. And to become Abra heathen is a sign of blessing as the creator changes his name to a heathenistic name. Now can you figure that one out and get back to me? So to read that part again now, Afro-Asiatic languages or Hamito-Shemitic languages are spoken predominantly in the Middle East, Africa, in North Africa, in the Horn of Africa and parts of Africa known as the Sahel or the Sahara Sudan region. Let's check out this other website. Because I'm wondering, if Ham is my brother, why am I cursing this person? So much, you know? It's like, I read the Bible in a way where I have to hate the Hamites I see on the pages of the Bible. Is that necessary? So if I say Shem is black and Ham is black, then in reading the Bible in order to get close to God, I have to hate somebody who was in the same household as my forefather, who they were both children to my same forefather, Noah. And the Most High saved both of them together along with Japheth in the same boat and saw it fitting to give salvation to both of these people. In other words, it seems to me that Shem, Ham, and Japheth, although I got to study Japheth, but it seems to me that Shem, Ham, and Japheth 
were all black in the boat with their wives and with Noah. And it's telling me here that these are just all black people. They're African people. So then, should I think that Israelites are Africans who got some special name called Israel as a part of a special covenant? Okay, look up here. This other website from aboutworldlanguages.com Afro-Asiatic language family Formerly called Hamito-Semitic is the largest language family of Northern Africa with a total number of speakers estimated at more than 300 million. It is spread throughout North Africa. The Arabian Peninsula, which was just dominated by Africans in ancient time and the Middle East um, and they go on I don't want to know more from that so hmm. and see again well actually the languages belonging to the Afro-Asiatic or Hamito-Semitic family are subdivided into six branches Berber, Chadic, Cushitic, Egyptian so then I would have to understand that Africans were all these people initially in ancient times. And also the Amatic and Semitic they list below. I'm not gonna read any more of this stuff. Okay, let's me let me check out this other website here. Now look at this one, languagesgulper.com. It, it's just hitting me here. That a number of these websites keep saying Afro-Asiatic languages, formerly called Hamito-Semitic. So after another 50 years or so, they'll remove the formally and you got to buy, search out for special books to find the word formally when they say formally called Hamito-Semitic. So it's another way of the trickery in the world to show how things are changing again. Formerly called Hamito-Semitic. It seems to me, and it's just coming to me now, that maybe this is a way to try to de-link Semitic from that which is Hamitic. So if it becomes Afro-Asiatic, then eventually Semitic will just become known as a word that has nothing to do with black or African type people. You get it? So the Bible starts to look like it more belongs to somebody else other than African or black people. So anyway, the language gulper says Afro-Asiatic former languages formerly called Hamito-Semitic are spoken by more than 400 million people living in Northern Africa, the Horn of Africa, and in the Southwest Asia. And they told us that Africans went into Asia from ancient times. with the exception of the extinct Sumerian. Okay, they're saying something a little bit different here. The extinct Sumerian, who, when I searched, they looked like they were Africans to me as well. I'm going to talk about the Sumerian um, in, in <laughs> the next few weeks or month or two. Afro-Asiatic has the longest documented history of any language Philom in the world. Egyptian was recorded as early as 3200 BCE, while the documenting of documentation of Semitic languages goes back to 2500 BCE. Contradictory hypothesis claim the African or Asian origin of Afro-Asiatic. Okay, now it's too early for me to speak on this or to prove it. But I'll just mention the inclination in my thoughts as I continue to study. Um, what I feel, and I could be wrong, but eventually I'm going to find out, uh, you know. When they say here, Egyptian was recorded as early as 3200 BCE while the documentation of Semitic languages goes back to 2500 BCE. Now, this is just the recording of it they're talking about. But they're trying to let you see here now that Egyptian might possibly have been there before 
the Semitic languages might have been in use before Semitic languages. And um, this pushes Egypt into a nice spot, except that both the, well, I guess when you deal with people origin, it probably doesn't matter so much, because if they're changing languages and developing new languages over time, that, that's, that's kind of a different thing. But the people would be the same people who are Semitic and who are Egyptian. They're just the one people. The African people. So Hamito Shemitic. So when you deal with now Hebrew Israelite, you're just dealing with a group of Africans out of the larger group of Africans in Africa and who had traveled elsewhere in Asia and to the Americas and so on, you're dealing with a group of Africans called the Israelites, as the most I was doing a new thing with that group of Africans. But these Africans, these Africans who are Israelites are, they're still Africans. But they seem to have been a blend of two families of Shem and Ham. And then you go further with understanding that the Israelite is a blend of Shem and Ham and is a Noahite, if I can say that. So the Israelite is hamito Shemitic, which is African. And these people who are African, who are hamito Shemitic, are Noahite people, I don't know if that's a proper term. And then you go further back, and these people go back to the garden, are then Adamites. So I guess what I'm trying to get at here is that when you look at the pages of the Bible, it presents stuff in such a religious or spiritual way. That sometimes we forget that on the ground, these people are just Africans. They're Kushites. When there were originally Kushites, there were no Israelites. That means the original pre-Israelite was a Kushite, was a Hamite. 